Hey guys, um, another really loud morning in New York City, and it's so hot and muggy. Um, but yeah, let's feel better by doing an integral. Yeah, cool. Alright, so here we have the equation of an ellipse that's centered at the origin, but of an unspecified size, because we don't know what A and B are. But we know that A and B are involved in determining half of the major axis and half of the minor axis. Um, you should know that if you haven't been living under a rock. And if you've in fact been paying attention to your geometry teachers, you'd additionally know that the area of such an ellipse is pi times A times B. So we know the answer. We just have to show how to get there using calculus. Yeah? Cool. Alright. Um, now, if you have in fact been living under a rock, an ellipse looks like this. Um, uh, actually, I can do a little bit better than that. The ellipse that we're looking at looks something like this. Um, yeah? Okay, so A is that length, half of the major axis, and B is that length, half of the minor axis. Of course, the ellipse could look like that, which is like a 90 degree rotation of our current ellipse, and B would be along the ma major axis if that were the case, yeah? Okay, cool. Uh, but using this equation and this visual, we see that this is the situation. And in fact, I've shaded this quarter of the ellipse because I think what we should do is instead of finding the area of all of the ellipse, let's do the quarter of the ellipse and multiply the result by four. Now, uh, before we do that, notice that we have an implicit uh, form of the equation of the ellipse here. We need to solve for y. So let's try and do that and I'll point out something uh, to you using this visual. Okay. So, if we try to solve for y, notice first we'd have to subtract this quantity from both sides and then multiply by b squared. Doing that, we can write that we have y squared equaling uh, b squared times uh, 1 minus x squared divided by a squared. Yeah? That's what we've got. Okay, cool. Now, in our next step to completely solve for y, we'd have to take the square root. And when we do, we'd have to write plus or minus. Now, the plus is for the top half of the ellipse, so that it's a function, and the minus is the bottom half of the ellipse. So, in this equation, uh, when we solve for y, uh, we have to take the square root, and when we write plus or minus, what I'm saying is the plus concerns uh, this top half of the ellipse, which I'll highlight in black, and the minus concerns that bottom half. Um, which I can highlight in a different color, but you get it, right? Okay, cool. All right, so since our region of concern is um, regarding the top half of the ellipse, we're just going to uh, use the positive square root, yeah? Okay, cool. All right, so I think, ellipse, you've served your purpose. Go away. All right, now we need the space, right? Now, uh, for this here, before we even take the square root, let's simplify the right side. We know that the trig substitution is going to happen for x here on the right side, right? Before we even take the square root. We know that. So, uh, we should make that substitution, and the substitution should clearly be x equals a sine theta. And I'm sorry if it's not clear. Um, then, uh, the right-hand side is going to say b squared times 1 minus x squared is going to be a squared sine squared theta and then we have divided by a squared how lucky because this is going to happen and we have one minus sine squared theta which we know is cosine squared theta so this is um, b squared times cosine squared theta so you see y squared is simply equal to b squared cosine squared theta using this substitution so then y is clearly um, b cosine theta. All right, now using this x, we can solve for dx. dx is going to be a cosine theta, my bad, I know it just happened, a cosine theta d theta, yeah? That's dx. Uh, okay, so do we have everything that we need? Yes. And um, maybe I rushed in our earlier drawing, but yeah. Uh, the limits of integration are going to be from 0 to a. 
just to point that out, 0 to a, right? But otherwise, it's this y, the positive square root, which we've just dealt with. After taking the square root, we just get b cosine theta using the substitution, right? So yeah, it would have been, um, yeah. Okay, you get it, you get it. I don't think I need to explain further. All right, so then here we go integral from, um, it's gonna be from zero to a of, um, and it would have been of y dx, right? Um, and y we just solved for is going to be b cosine theta and dx um, we already solved for as well and that's a cosine theta so a cosine theta d theta okay now this is going to be integral from 0 to a well sorry guys um, actually it's going to be a b and then it's going to be um, integral because a and b are constants uh, 0 to a cosine squared theta d theta and perhaps this is like the only place where we have to do uh, a little bit of yeah work um, and so then you know that uh, cosine 2 theta has three forms but one of them is uh, 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 using this we can write cosine 2 theta um, plus 1 divided by 2 it's equal to cosine squared theta, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make that uh, trig identity use over here, and then write that what we have is a b times um, zero to a, and the divide by two. Actually, I can write out here, right? Divide by two, and then cosine squared. Well, once you take care of the divide by two, is gonna turn into cosine two theta um, plus one d theta. Now, uh, what are our limits of integration uh, from 0 to a? Because we've turned into theta, so right now 0 to a is not appropriate. So what are they? Well, um, 0 is an x and a is also an x. So when we substitute in here uh, for 0, we're going to get, um, using this translation, right, we're going to get 0 is equal to a sine theta or zero is equal to sine theta, and this is for x equals zero. Uh, and so then taking sine inverse, we get that theta is equal to sine inverse of zero, which is zero. So zero is gonna stay zero. Uh, what about a? Well, we're gonna get, again, using this translation, a equals a sine theta, which is gonna lead to one equals sine theta. So theta equals sine inverse of one, which is pi over 2. Okay, so a turns into pi over 2. And now uh, we don't have to translate back to x as we can just execute this integral in our next step. Okay, so this is going to say now that we have a b divided by 2. And then the actual integral is going to be cosine 2 theta is going to have integral uh, 1 half uh, sine 2 theta, right? And then um, that's going to be evaluated at 0 and pi over 2. And then plus we have a b over 2. And then integral of 1 d theta is going to just be theta. And that 2 is going to be evaluated at 0 and pi over 2. Now, um, where do I move this? I don't know, but this is more important than a lot of stuff, right? So let's move it right here. Or right here, okay. And erase below it because we don't need this junk anymore, right? Okay, and actually I'm gonna include that junk with it. Okay. So we can finish here, and not much more to do here. Um, so this is zero. And so then we have AB over four, uh, sine of 2 times pi over 2, so sine of pi, which is 0, uh, minus, when I plug in 0, it goes without saying that I'm going to get sine of 0 on this part, so it's just going to be 0, so minus 0, plus AB divided by 2 times pi over 2, um, and then minus 0, yeah? As I said, sine of pi is 0, so this is 0, 
minus zero, and then plus AB times pi uh, O over four uh, minus zero, which is pi AB over four. But this is a quarter of the area, so the full area right there. Yeah? Cool. Take care.